So sure, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so um, I think what's going on geopolitically right now is people are no longer willing to be a part of what we would call the Western um, um, uh, so, uh, uh, abstract financial system. I call it, I, I call it the abstract financial system because it's not based on um, anything real. It's based on things like derivatives, uh, mm -hmm. stocks, bonds, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, trillions of dollars in um, notional values. That's right. Uh, instead of uh, because currencies themselves are fiat. Fiat currencies means that they're they're uh, objective. They're not like gold, silver, or things like we had in the Middle Ages. They're pieces of paper which are promissory notes so that right. you get this paper and they promise to give you something else for it later. That's right. And that's all it is. It's not valuable itself, in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And we've been, mm -hmm. uh, you know, remember the, how paper money started in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. It was an actual uh, promissory note which you would take down to the bank in exchange for gold. Mm -hmm. you, yes. you you could do that. And people have had faith that you could do that at any time. And so the notes, the bank notes, like in England, where there's the big ones for a lot and the smaller ones for a little, you could That's actually right. take those pieces of paper and any time you wanted and go down to the bank and get your uh, pile of gold or silver. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. England, it was both. And uh, that's where the idea of... of, of, of uh, of uh, the pound sterling comes from because right. sterling is silver. Anyway, right. that whole system has uh, been transitioned in the 1970s into basic, basically faith in the king dollar, the American dollar being the worldwide uh, reserve currency. And why is that? Because the king dollar can be used to buy what you need. Mm -hmm. And what's mm -hmm. the biggest thing that you need? Well, that's energy. Yes. Oil. So if you can buy oil, oil with it, that's just the same as like being able to get gold for it, isn't it? Something that you mm. need, something that's valuable. That's well, right. Well, whoopsie, um, the main sources of oil are no longer the United States. Mm -hmm. In fact, oil production in the United States peaked in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And then after mm -hmm. that, it's no, no longer, and now it's in other places. Well, uh, the other places like Russia, the Middle East mm -hmm. and Iran That's right. are no longer taking American dollars for oil. That's right. Well, that means it's over. Party's over, guys. You can go home. Nobody wants your dollars anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you believe right now that uh, North America, uh, both US of A and Canada, mm -hmm. Uh, in addition to living off of uh, the funny money, mm -hmm. aka fiat currency, our energy source is coming from primarily from uh, U.S. Uh, oil, strategic oil reserves. That's right. They're drawing it down because um, they can't buy anything with their money overseas. That's right. So they have to they have to sell their oil instead. Mm -hmm. That's all they got. That's a, that's a worldwide commodity. There's nothing else in the United States other than technology, which, right. which is a different kind of a uh, playing field because you you don't sell technology to individuals. You sell it to large companies or factories that make your products under license. You bet. So, so that's a little bit different. And, um, and that technological advantage is no longer like what it used to be either. But the point is for daily day living, it's energy and money and they're having to draw down their oil reserves because they got no money they're bankrupt that's right that's right and their funny money isn't being recognized by foreign countries such as uh, russia oh, ob obviously not and um the sanctions are, are boomeranging so that now the russians are extending their uh they're not extending their power and this has nothing to do with the power of their energy resources. It has to do with the power of the American dollar. The uh, Russians aren't taking dollars for oil or gas anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what this all means. It doesn't mean that the Russians are turning off oil and gas. Mm -hmm. You can have all the oil and gas you want from Russia. But if you're not going to pay for it with something that the Russians want, 
then you're going to get cut off. And that's what the Russians have done just today with the Netherlands. And that's what they did last week, where I think it was with Poland. And uh, then it was Sweden and, and, uh, and so on. And, and, you know, and of course, these countries are, are between a rock and a hard place because they have to obey their WEF, uh, UN, um, uh, EU masters. That's right. Uh, because they've all been, uh, all their politicians are put into power by them, just like it is here in Canada. Uh, but the businesses in those countries, which is the real power, the economics, they're refusing yeah. to cooperate with the corrupt the political elite in all these uh, countries. And they're simply uh, paying uh, in rubles for the gas through offshore banks or through Gazprom accounts set up in uh, safe havens where they can exchange for what they need. So they're defying all these ridiculous political sanctions and they're, and they're buying their energy uh, one way or the other. And, uh, of course, uh, so the Russians aren't cutting anybody off. It's these, yeah. these countries are cutting themselves off by refusing to pay. But that's not how you see it in the, in the news, is it? Well, the news won't tell you the truth. No, it won't. All. all these people have to do is pay in rubles. And you can go that's get right. rubles anywhere you want if you uh, take some gold with you. <laughs> that's right. No gold, no deal. But if no you take precious metal, no if you, deal. If you take a whole pile of, uh, of treasury notes, T-bills, or American dollars, you'll get maybe 20 or 30% on the dollar, if you're lucky, mm -hmm. because that's, not, that's what they're worth now. Another thing about the price of oil, you know, at the pump, here we are with extremely high oil prices. Yes, Yet, this morning, West Coast, 2.24 per liter. Yeah, well, gas is something like 18 cents a liter in Iran. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. something like 25 cents a liter in Dubai. That's right. <laughs> so what's going on? Why is that? And, that, and the actual world price of just oil is uh, average 30% less in uh, Asia and uh, Africa. Than it, and that's a so-called world price. Sorry, world price isn't working anymore. Now it's, it's higher in the West than it is in the East. Correct. So this is a very strange situation. It's equal, equally ironic that Canada and the U.S. are totally self-sufficient in oil. That's right. This is artificially. Proven in the third year three of uh, uh, President uh, T's, the 45th president's, uh, yeah. while he was in power. Because for the first time, not only U.S. was uh, capable of uh, keeping the energy price low, but but the, also the first time uh, for a long, long time in America's history that uh, suddenly U.S. becomes an energy exporting country. Absolutely. Meaning and... that they're able to uh, take shale gas or mm -hmm. shale gas through fracking, yep. uh, break it down and use the technology called uh, GTO, gas to oil yes. conversion, and then export them. Yes, and the and the main the main problem in North America is the oil isn't where the refineries are, uh, so what you have to do is move it by pipeline or rail. That's right. And That's right. what's the first thing the Biden presidency did after if, after one week in power? He canceled the Keystone XL pipeline, which was That's right. designed to move oil and other products from the oil fields of Alberta down to the uh, United States and the East and the oil refineries and along the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, why did why was that? Why, why, why did they do that? Think about it deeply. Well, the reason why they did that is because the oil in Canada and the actual pipeline itself is not controlled by the uh, Rockefeller uh, um, oil empire. That's right. It's not or, or the Kazarian mafia, some people call them. That's right. It's it's controlled by other uh, you know uh, companies that are not in their sphere of influence. So the the entire energy crisis uh, is caused by the fact that it's not a matter of a lack of oil. We got oil right here. It's just that it's not the oil that they own, that they control, and that they need in order to get money for themselves, and they're going to be bankrupt. So it's the Biden. Precisely, yes. It's the Biden regime. That, that it's it's cutting off all other sources of oil, forcing people to buy its own inflated overpriced oil, which is why the 
gas pump is so high. And then, of course, the petroleum reserve, uh, they can just uh, release that slowly at a very high price and make uh, and steal all that money and make a profit from it. That's right. So but ultimately, we're yeah. still living and circulating the funny money throughout uh, continental North America. Yes. Especially in Canada and the USA. Yes, and it's necessary for them to do this ridiculous squeeze, uh, all this ridiculous pressure on us, because you know, we're, we're their captive economic slaves, and they're basically uh, uh, doing sanctions against Russia and, and to squeeze the Europeans to try to get them to buy uh, American natural gas, for example, mm -hmm. at hugely infl inflated prices. That's right. So, and, and or 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 American public and the Canadian public to pay and hugely inflated prices for gasoline, controlled by companies controlled by the Biden administration and their friends. Yes. So that that's what it is. It has nothing to do with anything else. And and the um, and this situation will uh, will be over. Mm -hmm. uh, when when it gets to the point where people stop driving, mm -hmm. and, um, and or people rebel against their uh, political leaders for this uh, for creating this situation, of course. and and when um, imports grind to a halt mm -hmm. because there's nothing left to trade. That's right. Dollars just paper, and it's it's already happening. Um, whenever the Americans try to uh, finance their debt by having another uh, T bill auction. Um, it's gotten down to the point where, of course, no foreign money is is being invested in American T bills. They're they're having to go into their own um, digital printing press and uh, yes. print uh, their own money to buy their own uh, T bills, and they're getting uh, hedge funds and so-called uh, independent uh, buyers to do that, but they're not. For example, the hedge funds, when they go and buy T-bills, they can go back to the Federal Reserve the next week and cash them in for Canadian, for American dollars again. That's right. Yeah, but those, uh, but those, uh, those dollars are only good in North America. You can't buy anything from outside this economic bubble that we've created by the international sanctions against the East. And of course, China is not participating in those sanctions. Mm -hmm. Russia is certainly not. India mm -hmm. has refused. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's getting down to China, I mean, uh, Japan and South Korea mm -hmm. are probably the only two economic powerhouses outside of Europe and North America that are cooperating. That's right. And it, I, I don't think that'll hold up for very long either. Mm. And then, of course, wow, most, of, most of South America, uh, especially led by countries like Brazil and Venezuela, are not cooperating with the sanctions. That's right. And, right. and, are, and are just weaning themselves from the U.S. dollar. If things go like this, mm -hmm. you can actually watch in real time, real time the collapse of the U.S. dollar by looking at the U.S. ruble exchange rate. Yes. Uh, it's gone from 80 three months ago, 80 rubles to the dollar. Uh, yesterday it was uh, 64. Okay. And uh, for a while it was 58 last week. Wow. Went back up a little bit. Now it's down to 64. If I look on my uh, um, browser right now, mm -hmm. let's just for sake of fun see what it is today, because it's sure. a Monday, and it's 64. It it's is. it's holding steady at 64. Wow. Now all it has to do, and it's heading back down again. It was up to 66 on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So if it heads back down again and gets below 50. Uh, that is a real-time devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Well, what's the difference between 50 and 80? It's about uh, 30%. Mm. So there's a 30% devaluation of the U.S. dollar. Because remember, the Russian ruble is exchangeable directly for gold. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, yeah. that, that's it. That's right. So it's only taken two months. <laughs> uh, uh, another month or two, and the uh, uh, American economy will totally collapse as far vis a vis imports. Mm. There won't be any. And um, that'll lead to a uh, change in government and, uh, and so on. So that is what's the important factor. Now, people mm -hmm. say, oh, war is far more important than money. Uh, no, no. 
No, wars are fights over money. Get it? That's right. So what's important, yes. the war or the money, okay? Uh, and Ultimately, it all boils down to the money. It's the money that of matters. Of course. Of course. And what is money? Well, money is a control mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, money was rare. Mm -hmm. uh, only elites ever used it. Mm -hmm. Only elites ever had any. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, gold, mostly, th that they would use to um, uh, buy soldiers, mercenaries, and weapons to have wars with each other. Yep. Um, and a trade uh, was all, uh, international trade was limited to luxury goods and products. That's right. All through the all through the Middle Ages, all through the 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 time the in the ancient world, the time of the what we call the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. uh, between A Asia, China, and the West, the the trading items were all luxury items: wine, uh, jewels, spices, Silk. silks, Spice. um, jewelry of all kinds. Uh, uh, you know, things, things, luxury products. Do you think the common people ever had anything from China? Of course not. Do you think the common no. people ever had even money? Of course not. The king's no. tax collectors would come around r once a year to grab people's crops mm -hmm. and their uh, and their animals, a certain percentage. That's how you paid your taxes. There's no currency. That was for yeah. traders. That was for merchants. The common peasant mm -hmm. class never used money. And that's because they didn't have any, didn't need it. So right. we're in a situation now um, where we're going to have to return to a form of self-sufficient barter within communities yeah. because uh there will be money but it'll be it it won't be the the kind that is not based on a on a specific commodity or gold and silver that you can hold in your hand no more paper goodbye and people who dream about uh, digital currencies well yeah there might be a very well constructed um, method of digital valuations for international trade, which won't mm -hmm. which won't be corruptible, because right. it, it'll be on the blockchain verifiable, just like an email is is never gets lost, even though it's divided into these little packets. Because when you send the email, there's a uh, there's a code for the beginning of the packet and the end of the packet, and there's a, a send and receive signal. And um, that's how the internet works, and so it can't be. Um, it can't. Uh, an email doesn't get fragmented, or and, and there's proof of who sent it and who got it. So money exchanges will be like that. But any digital currency will be exchangeable directly for gold and silver eventually, just like the ruble is today. Yes. Well, right away, if you have a system like that, you've destroyed the cabal. Well. For commoners like you and I, um, other than the fact that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, considering something that really holds value, mm -hmm. such as precious metals and such, uh, yep. the other way perhaps is that we have to brace for this uh, rough ride. We do. Something Be coming rough ride. I would estimate the number of people who are ahead of the curve and are awake that have precious metals or something of that sort in their homes. Mm -hmm. is way less than 10 percent indeed of the population indeed. Um, if you went back 100 years ago it would be well over 80 percent yes but today because of this decoupling uh mm -hmm. into the world of fantasy mm -hmm. uh with the fiat currencies and paper money and the mm -hmm. fact that we don't even have a gold reserve canada's gold reserve was uh was emptied out um, mm -hmm. in the 1990s, I believe, by the conservative government under, I um, can't remember his name right now, but anyway, he's the one who sold the last of our gold reserves. Um, he's WEF too, by the way, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. previous prime minister. You bet. And I guess you've been noticing how the WEF uh, alumni keep cropping up everywhere, like on the board of directors of Twitter. How about that? course amazing uh, we've been, we've, been uh, in, we've been trapped in this controlled situation for a long long time right and uh, without uh, 
without uh, knowledge. Exactly. But uh, as time goes by, it seems like uh, the general public are coming to the awakening and the awareness that the devils are among us all these time. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I've known about Klaus Schwab for about eight years. Okay. About eight years ago is when I first heard of the guy and when I first, first heard of the WEF. Well, I've heard of the WEF before, but I didn't know that it, this particular man, Klaus Schwab, had founded it way back in the 1950s. Because Klaus Schwab is quite old. He's in his late 80s. That's and, right. um, you know, I, I started to look into this guy and that's when I found out that he his family owned this uh, engineering firm, which is originally a Swiss but they set it up in Ravens, Ravensburg, or is, is it Ravensbrück? I can't remember. I think it's Ravensburg um, in Germany, which is just over the Swiss border. And uh, Ravensburg was never bombed during World War II. Mm -hmm. That's one interesting thing about it. And it had a, a labor camp full of uh, Jewish uh, slaves and, and Russian soldiers in a prison camp there. And uh, then, of course, I found out Klaus Schwab's father was a, a, a member of what was called Hitler's Friends Circle. Mm. Uh, this Friends Circle, and, and Himmler had one too, and Goring had one too. These were mm. sponsors in the, um, in the uh, financial community and in the, in, in the industrial community in Germany. And the way they would do it is the uh, big industrial firms like Krupp and the big banks, uh, they would, um, they would uh, sponsor politicians uh, in order to represent their interests uh, as elected officials, okay? Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is the way it's done in all countries. Um, for example, Trudeau is sponsored by the Seagram's family. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where his uh, political power comes from. And that they sponsored his father likewise. And, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the, the Seagram Scone, the oldest son, uh, was uh, Justin Trudeau's campaign manager. And of course, the embarrassing part about the Seagram sisters being on trial and some of them in jail for being part of that um, Nexium uh, uh, sex slave cult mm -hmm. is, of course, brushed under the table by the captured media who are paid to keep quiet about that. Um, but let's get back to Klaus Schwab. His family is so Nazi, it's not even funny. And I've known this for a long time, and I searched and searched the internet, and couldn't find anything more specific because it's been scrubbed. And then lo and behold, today I see the photo in Ben Fulford's website of Klaus Schwab's father in his Nazi uniform. Mm -hmm. Well, where did that come from? You see, uh, that, that, things like that is proof to me that Ben is very well connected because that photograph could only come from an NSA secret archive or some other intelligence service file okay mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that photo's never been on the internet before so there you mm -hmm. go somebody dug that up gave it to ben that means that there's a concerted uh disclosure effort going on now yes absolutely yeah so and the facts things are definitely going so let's see how it progresses yeah. hopefully yeah and uh, we're looking forward to better days ahead yep. better futures yeah it's going to be a rough ride for certain mm -hmm. because a lot of things are happening mm -hmm. and uh people are definitely uh waking up to a certain degree absolutely but given in time they're going to uh, wake up more and more and uh the world will be different by then. And and remember that the media is never going to tell you that people are waking up. But you of can course. read between the lines and you can figure out that it's true. And I, the best example here in Canada, if you want to keep local, is the fact that both uh, uh, NDP leader and the Liberal leader cannot appear in public anywhere. That's right. That's right. Without the NDP leader. The NDP leader was uh, chased out of the Brenton, Ontario, yeah. uh, the Sikh community. Yeah. And, uh, apparently, the Sikhs don't like him. But the guy all. is Sikh himself. <laughs> he's, yes. he's Sikh himself. And for his own religious uh, group to turn against him like that is absolutely amazing. Because that means they're calling him a traitor to, their, right. to their movement. That's right. So we'll have to wait and see how things progresses. And Trudeau can't show up even in so-called safe liberal writings 
uh, or or even NDP, NDP writings. He can't even show up in NDP writings, which he thought would be even safer uh, well, without it being heckled. Well, to show how unpopular mm -hmm. these politic these Canadian political figureheads uh, are now. Right. Now, and um, now you want to. It also makes mm -hmm. you kind of as typical Canadians. It makes also goes back to makes you wonder mm -hmm. how. Uh, the federal liberal prime minister was able to uh, capture the second round of most recent uh, election back in last September. Well, it does make me wonder uh, what kind of fraud um, was was involved there. And we do know that the media is completely fraudulent. And here's another evidence of that. Uh, if you remember back in September, there were all these polls saying how popular Trudeau was uh, because of his uh, amazing uh, COVID response and how he'd saved us all from the horrible dragon at the door of our cave. And all us poor cowering uh, cavemen uh, had to rely on him to save us all. And that's how he got reelected and blah, blah, blah. Well, mm -hmm. how, how come there's no uh, popularity polls been published about Trudeau for, uh, since last fall? How come when you search the internet right now, you can't find a popularity poll for uh, Trudeau? You can't find one for Singh? Uh, why? I thought the I thought the pollers were neutral. I thought no, the, they're not. So the, I guess they only do polls when they get told to, and it's all controlled. Is that it? So polls are just a form of manipulation again, like an advertisement. So actually, the, we live in a world of lies. That's right. Uh huh. It's a big, big lie. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, Stop. I think people are waking up. Stop. Hello.